Welcome to this PowerPoint presentation on decision making. In this set of slides, I'm going to talk about individual decision making, but there will be another set of slides that focuses on group decision making and how group decision making is different from individual decision making. If you look at the decision making models that are available in a variety of different academic disciplines, you can see that they can usually be put into one kind of category or another. For example, uh, economists have traditionally relied on something known as normative decision-making models. These are models of how people make decisions, which make the assumption that people are rational decision-makers who will always choose the most optimal solution and that they're good at making these kinds of decisions. Descriptive decision-making models, on the other hand, are more often employed by psychologists. A descriptive decision-making models try to explain the process that people actually use when they're making decisions, not the way people ought to make decisions if they were rational. You could also classify decision-making uh, according to the degree to which it's rational, meaning it relies on information and evidence and logical thinking, versus intuitive uh, decision-making. In intuitive decision-making, you're not that worried about uh, new information or following some logical path. You're relying on emotion and your experience. In other words, you're going with your gut. Uh, and this isn't necessarily a bad way of making decisions. Uh, but it is a very different way of making decisions than if you're trying to stick to some kind of rational plan. One of the problems with thinking about human beings as being rational decision makers is that humans necessarily operate under something that's known as bounded rationality. In other words, even if we're trying to be as rational as we can be, there are limits on how rational we can be. We have a limited capacity to process information, so we just can't process um, as much information as we would like or as quickly as we would like. And we often don't have all of the information that we need to make a perfectly rational decision. And so um, it's going to be hard to solve very complicated problems in a completely rational way because most of the time we don't even know what we don't know. And this is further compromised by the cognitive biases that we bring into the decision-making situation. There are a wide uh, variety of traps that we fall into when we're making judgments and decision-making. Um, a partial list of these can be seen on the slide. I'm not going to talk about them here on this presentation, but your textbook goes into detail about quite a number of these, and uh, I will want you to be familiar with those biases that are discussed in the textbook. Because of bounded rationality, we usually can't ever make the best possible decision because we don't even really know what the best possible decision would be. And so in order to get on with life and make the decisions that need to be made, one has to become a sort of a little bit of a satisficer, at least. Um, let me talk about satisficing by comparing it with something called maximizing. To make things simpler than they are, let's pretend that people can be classified as maximizers or satisficers. Maximizers are the people that are always trying to reach the best possible outcome. Um, they're hesitant to turn in a paper that they're writing for a class because if they revise it just one more time, maybe it will be perfect. Or when they're shopping for some big item like a car or a house, they take a very long time to do this because they're afraid to commit to one choice on the chance there will be an even better one um, around the corner. Uh, the same thing can happen if you're looking for a mate. If you're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend uh, and you have this perfect ideal in mind and if the person you're with right now doesn't quite measure up to perfection, you may not be willing to commit because you think there's better to be had. Not surprisingly, maximizers usually um, end up not terribly happy. Uh, they're exhausted by constantly seeking the best possible thing, constantly comparing decisions, um, 
they're second guessing themselves all the time. It takes them much longer and it's much more effortful for them to make decisions. And they're never really happy with the outcome because they always think they could have made a better decision. Satisficers, on the other hand, are people who are content with good enough. They understand that uh, what they have chosen may not be the best of all possible outcomes, but it's good enough to get you by and to get the job done. So they don't obsess over what other options might be out there. They don't second guess themselves all the time and have regret. They move, they make the decision and they move on. But by and large, satisficers are happier with uh, life in general and certainly with the decisions they make than maximizers are. You might think a little bit about yourself in this regard. Are you more of a perfectionist maximizer or a Mr. Good Enough satisficer? And I'll end with a little cartoon to indicate that um, even when it comes to parenting, um, you can't expect perfection from your kids. You have to be content with good enough.